Hey, what's up, Gids here? And it's been over a month already since Nino Kuni Crossworlds has been out, and I've been grinding a lot. And I finally reached level 80. But there are still a lot of things that a lot of players don't know about the game. So for this video, we're going to do five tips and tricks that you still probably don't know about the game. So hopefully you learned something from this one and let's go ahead and start. All right, for this first trick, it's going to have something to do with the Chaos Field bosses. Okay, so as you all know, Chaos Field bosses have been introduced into the game. So if you go to Chaos Field, we have one in Ancient Ruins in Floor 4. And we also have one that's been recently introduced in the Sky Pirate Shipyard okay, in Floor 4 as well. Okay, so this trick is going to be an easy way for you to teleport into Floor 4 of Sky Pirate Shipyard after finishing the Ancient Ruins boss. Okay, so first of all, I think everyone already knows that you have to fast travel first to floor 3 and then enter floor 4 manually so that you don't consume the diamonds over here by using fast travel or you're going to use gold for the fast travel on this one but first let's set the trick up okay so first you're going to kai pirate shipyard floor 3 so you're going to the entrance because you can't actually do this trick inside floor 4 right away so first teleport into sky pirate shipyard floor 3 we're going to the entrance to floor 4. So if you want an easy way to navigate this one, just click on this one and then click on move. Okay, so your character is going to move there automatically. Okay, once you're here, this is where the trick begins. So click on your menu, click on the AI mode icon, okay, and then click on AI in current area. But you're going to cancel this one, so you have 5 seconds to cancel it, so cancel it, okay. Once you have canceled it, now you can just go move into Sky Pirate or Ancient Ruins Floor 3 and enter Floor 4. Okay, so watch what we're going to do here. Okay, so navigating Floor 3, we have to go to Hall of Worship. Okay, so we're going to enter floor 4 and we're going to pretend that the Chaos Field boss is already spawned. Um, we still have around 30 minutes. 30 minutes before it actually spawns, but oh well. Just for the sake of the demo, let's do it right now. So we're going to the hall over here, so we're going to pretend that we have the boss spawned. Alright, so... Let's pretend the boss is already here. We killed the boss. Are you going to do so? Click on the menu, click on the AI mode, and then click on AI in recent area, fast travel, and cancel your AI mode. And tada! You're already here, and you just have to go inside. And you're in Chaos Field Floor 4 on the Sky Pirate ship. Okay, so hopefully this one helps you and it's going to be a shortcut for your Chaos Field boss runs. So good luck hunting. See you on the next turn. Okay, there we go. We're starting. Just gonna ready up my teleporter. Okay. Okay, let's go AI mode. And there you go. I'm already on the entrance. So you just have to cancel your AI mode. And move in. Oops, I forgot to pull in my party. I mean... They can get here on their own. Uh. <laughs> Anyways, special thanks to Renrox who taught us about this trick. Alright, so now we're going to do a boss right away and... Just hit him once and then leave it.
Okay, there you go. So that's it for the new teleport teleport check. So you can basically use this one for any point in the map. So it functions as a save point or respawn point for any place that you actually want. So if you want to set this up as a spawn point, you just set your AI mode over here. Well, you can't AI here. But yeah, it's somewhere that uh, there are monsters nearby. Okay, so there needs to be monsters nearby for it to activate. Use it however you want. If you find any creative uses for it, let us know. Okay, so that's it for this one. This next trick is only a quality of life trick. So if you're getting annoyed by the notification, you can actually just swipe left to remove them. Okay, I'm just swiping left. Okay, so with that, there's already no more notifications popping up. And if you really get annoyed with notifications, you can just click the cogwheel here and just turn off the notifications that you don't think you really need. So costumes, titles, skills, or whatever, right? So if you don't think you need those notifications, just turn it off and your UI is going to look cleaner. All right, so yeah, again, just swipe left and they're gone. Now it's clean. Okay, so that's for your tip. Okay, for this next trick, it's going to be about a traveling merchant. And most people already know the traveling merchant is that merchant that has this icon over here around the map. So he travels around all the maps here in Nino Kun Cross Worlds. And it's a random spot every time. And he spawns every two minutes after, right after a despawn. But he stays up for around two hours. So. The thing with the traveling merchant is that if you arrive first, he has a free item for you. So you want to maximize the free items every two hours that he spawns in a new location. But the problem is that a lot of players couldn't get in because when you try to go in and fast travel, it says channel full, you can't move, right? So here's what you can do to actually bypass that restriction. So first is you have to switch channels to channel 1 anywhere anywhere you are in the map. So it doesn't matter if you're on Chaos Field or you're in a field map. You just need to switch to channel 1. Okay. Once you're in channel 1, you should already be able to get in using the, tel the fast travel over here. But here's another trick with this one. So if you're not sure where the field boss is going to spawn, or basically right after he despawns, you don't know where he is going to come from. So here's the second part of the trick. You can go to your inventory, miscellaneous, and then miscellaneous again. Click on an ingredient, click course, and then spam move. Right? So whenever he's not yet an, on the map, it's going to say that the traveling merchant hasn't spawned yet. And you can just spam this one. Just click it multiple times and then yeah, you're going to get in no matter what. Even if it's going to say the channel is, is full. But if you're going to spam this one, you should be able to get in pretty quickly and you'll be guaranteeing yourself a free item from the traveling merchant. So let's try this one in around 10 minutes. And so yeah, 8 minutes he despawns and then in around 2 minutes he's, he's going to respawn. So let's try and guarantee ourselves a free item from the traveling merchant. Okay, so the traveling merchant has just despawned. So if you look around, you can see the traveling merchant icon. So this means that in around 2 minutes he's going to respawn. So time right now is 17.09, so probably at 17.10 or 17.11 is going to show up. So we're just going to prepare and go to our backpack, the lane use, and go to our stores and try to spam this one. Okay, so this is what we're going to spam once the traveling merchant comes out. Okay, well, after a minute, probably I'm going to start spamming to guarantee my spot on a free item from the traveling merchant. Okay, so I'll see you right back once he responds. And I got distracted, so I'm probably not going to get a free item right now. Oh my god. I was doing something else. I forgot I had two minutes. Yeah, anyways, it got sold out right away. So the free item was this thing. But anyways, that's okay. It's okay. We don't need it. But yeah. <laughs> I forgot, I forgot really like, oh man, I got distracted for a bit there. Anyways, that's it for this one. It's an easy way for you to do your traveling merchant. This next trick is about familiar arena. So if you go to familiar arena and try to scout your enemy players, so this is the advantage of being an attacker. Well, don't look at my attack history right now. It's 
really bad because of Toko. <laughs> anyway, if you're trying to look for players to attack, right? So for example, this is my guildmate right here, our kingdom uh, member, so Winter. So for example, if you want to know what the familiars that they, they have hidden in their defense, well, let's just use Gaijin here as an example. So you want to know what these two are over here, you can check their profile. So you know that they had a Molten Lion, Penguicorn, and Might in their defense, but you can check their character info over here and you can see it's the same familiars equip, but you can actually cycle through their other characters here and they might have forgotten to set up or that they are using the other familiar. So you can see here they have a Toko right here. And then back here, you, you know that they have an Ouroboros here. Okay, this one's the same. And this one's the same. Okay, so you can assume that the other two characters that they have is an Ouroboros or a Toko. Right, so if you're trying to figure out what these two are, it's probably a Toko over here and then an Ouroboros over here. Okay, but if we try to switch again, probably Q over here. So um, they have. Wait, can I change back? So Q, so he has Tiryu, Hippocampus, Toko, and we don't know their front line. Okay, we can always assume if it's a front line, there's going to be an Ebon Thorax, but we don't know that for sure. So we're going to try scout again. Right. Okay, so all his. Okay, everything here is using Hippocampus and Tiryu, so you don't really get new information but you can always assume that there's going to be probably Ebon Torex over here because Ebon Torex everyone has it has that guy and he's actually a very good familiar right okay so let's try to check winter so we know that he has oh, come on so we know that winter has a you might and a stag turn over here but if we look at his profile character info right so there's a sparky over here and a toko okay Tag Torn. So this one's a key unit here that you have to be careful about and a Ouroboros. Okay, so again, Toko, there's your Tag Torn. Tag Torn might suit you. Okay, so from all of that scouting, you'll be able to deduce what kinds of familiars he is hiding over here. Okay, so you, you saw that he has a Toko, so this is probably Toko and probably this is a Sparky maybe if they strengthen their Sparky. Alright, so that's how you can scout for your opponents and probably try to figure out what defense they are running. Uh, this does not work on whales because you don't really know or well, they have a vast collection of familiars and they're going to outmatch you in CP. But yeah, <laughs> you can do this one anytime you want because well, in familiar arena, you want to maximize your wins because you can only get tickets once every four hours and your ranking is going to be very important. And do not lose attacks like this one because it's going to hurt your rankings pretty bad, right? So you you have to always try to guarantee your attacks like my win streak over here, but just don't look up here. It's all red. I've been kicked out of top 100. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on to the next tip. All right, next tip for you guys is for your party. So if you if you look at your skills, you have your passive skills, right? So you have to be careful with setting up your passive skills, especially the aura skills over here. So attack aura, defense aura, HP aura, and feed aura, because they actually do not stack. If you look at here on my party and view my party skills, so both of us have an attack aura, three of us have an attack aura. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to remove the attack aura that I have. So I'm going to unequip this one, nothing changed, right? My CP did not change at all because my team already has an attack aura. Okay, so attack aura, attack aura. I actually don't need any more attack auras in my team. So it's best that you coordinate with your party members what kinds of auras you're going to take into the battles. This is going to come in um, especially clutch in parties or boss field hunts and also for your kingdom dungeons, kingdom defense, and relic wars. Okay, so keep in mind you have to set up the auras depending on what your party members have. Okay, so it's best that you maximize the skill slots or passive skill slots for each and every one of your party members. Okay, so that's it for this tip. Okay, that's it for this video. If you learned something new, please leave a like, comment, probably what you have learned, and subscribe if you haven't yet. And if you find this helpful, share it to other people. And yeah, leave, leave a comment down below if you have any other 
tips and tricks of your own that we can incorporate into another video later on in the future. Okay, so once again, thank you very much. See you again next time. Bye-bye.